I wanted the audience to have the experience that I had when I read that book. That was my only goal. If I could create a cinematic equivalent of the experience that I had when I read Gail's book, then I thought I would succeed. And, and what that meant was that I would laugh and I would cry and I would be thrilled and I would be surprised and I would experience deep loss and I would feel life affirmed and I would remember what it was like to f go through first love and first loss. And, and most of all, I would learn something about how life is really defined through the people who we love. And that's what I wanted to create in this movie, a real roller coaster that was a rich, rich, surprising, exciting, moving, emotional experience. I hear from a lot of people that they think about the film long after they've seen it. I hear this from, of course, it's kind of core audience of teenagers, but I hear it from adults and from parents. I can't tell you the number of my peers who have seen the movie and called me a week later saying they're still thinking about it, and that's really gratifying. It's, it's a remarkable group of actors. I mean, it's really, a, it's, it's the future Hall of Fame of, uh, of American acting. You know, Murray is, is extraordinary, and Josh is great, and the two of them had wonderful chemistry. And of course, Stacy Keach, you know, the, the, the Babe Ruth of our, of our acting squad. I mean, really, it brings such uh, intensity and beauty and tenderness to his performance as Gramps. It just is, is fantastic. But of course, the core of the film is uh, in the performances of Jamie Blackley as Adam and Chloe Moretz as Mia. And they both bring so much of themselves to what they have created in these characters that uh, it couldn't help but, I think, be moving and exciting. And they have this kind of remarkable chemistry themselves. And they had it the moment they met. I mean. We, Adam walked, uh, Jamie walked into the uh, audition room and met Chloe and they started working together and we couldn't believe our eyes. I and mean, they had instant chemistry and it was exciting. It was really exciting to see and it was exciting to work with them every step of the way. The very first thing I did after I read the book was put together a, uh, a playlist of music. I, my initial response was a musical response because uh, the book, as wonderful as it is, has one thing very central that the movie, uh, I'm sorry, the book, as wonderful as it is, lacks one thing that the movie has, which is you can't hear the music. And there's so much music in this film. It's really, in a way, a musical. There's Mia's music, the classical cello music that she performs. There's Adam's music, the music that his band performs. There's the music that Mia's dad's punk band performs. There's the music that they listen to, the grunge music from the Pacific Northwest, the new wave music, the punk music that her parents love, and the contemporary music that's of the kids' generation. But one of the things that's really exciting about these people is that they are influenced by generations of music. Chloe uh, as, as, as Mia and Jamie as Adam are as influenced by, by Blondie as they are by the Orwells. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it's 30, 40 years of musical influence. And that's really exciting stuff. So there's a, 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 a great palette, a rich palette to work with. And I just knew that making a film using this music would be you know, a really exciting thing to do. And then, of course, we also have the score by the great Hector Pereira, who audiences know from his score for Despicable Me and Despicable Me 2 and other wonderful films like that, and he brought such a richness to it. So there's just an endless kind of musical uh, sense going on throughout the film, and uh, it was a really, really exciting part of creating it. As you say, music is a character in this film. I always would say to people, it's the music is the air that the characters in this film breathe.